You know, if we had a real engineer, we could have that um, bumper music fade out and talk over the top of it. But nope, <laughs> yeah. we just got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I knew more to help. But uh, yeah. It's all right. We don't mind being <laughs> amateurish. <laughs> Not at all. Welcome to Real Monsters. One more time. We got a very strange show again yet again and if god if we didn't have a strange show what would we do <laughs> this is very true um were we wanting to do the m palette cleanser cleanser absolutely yeah. we have an m of the week here to start us off um and one of the things i like about this photo are the colors um and I'm I'm looking forward to um, I'm looking forward to maybe a little bit of snow today and tomorrow, and she can go out because she loves the snow. And she doesn't get it very often. I hope you guys get just a little bit, not like us. Hey, man, we're getting hammered down here. It, it's not expected. Um, we don't get, you know any type of volume of snow except for once every decade or so and uh so we're not due yet that's good hope it doesn't so so this um today's show is local to me and so it is i'm gonna start off with some local scenery images that I have taken so to give people a you know a flavor for what the local uh, geography is like um, we are going to have some pictures wonderful what is going on here I see the uh, one with is that Mount Rainier in the background uh, with the water here, no, that is, um, the, it's the Olympic okay. Mountains. I don't know why it's, um, gone, oh, really, really weird. There was a blank spot in the rotation of the slideshow. And, um, that will be corrected here shortly. Um, so, so we have a very interesting topography here with Puget Sound, two mountain ranges, you know, uh, four volcanoes, uh, lots of rain, lots of trees, lots of water. Um, mm -hmm. this, and this particular it's picture beautiful. there was actually taken from Olala. Okay. I went out there this week just to poke around and see what it's like today. And because the little town of Olala, Washington, over on the mm -hmm. Olympic Peninsula, is where our story takes place. And mm -hmm. uh, there's no town there anymore. <laughs> Yeah, if, that's what you were saying. Yeah, there, um, it's an area. It's not a town. There's no city. Census designated. There's, there's mm -hmm. no center. 
I mean, when, when I put in my GPS to take me to the city of Olala, it took me to somebody's chicken farm. I'm not even uh, kidding. I am not even kidding. That's where they said the center of the town was. Wow. Um, and what happened with that? Do we know? Well, there was there there was a time uh, around the time that our story takes place, which was early 20th century. Mm-hmm. There was a fleet of uh, ships called mosquito uh, um, mosquito boats or mosquito clippers or something like that that plied the waters of Puget Sound. They were not ocean going, um, huh. and they were like you know ferries, but you know you know they would ferry people and and goods all around Puget Sound to some of these places mm-hmm. that were largely cut off uh, from by roads you know a lot roads are roads are very difficult to build out here you have so much look mm-hmm. you can't walk anywhere without making a trail yeah absolutely <laughs> there's no there's no bushwhacking if you tried just to walk through the woods somewhere it would take you Forever. Um, you ever uh, see that show Adam Ruins Everything on True TV? Uh, I have not. He uh, does in like factual stuff. You know, he goes after myths and takes them apart. Okay. He uh, did one on what you were saying there with walking through the woods. Yeah. And they actually had a few scientific studies that showed that animals move about 100 meters in either direction when a human walks through there and it leaves, you know, the scent will leave that 100 meter in either direction trail, basically. No doubt. Yeah. It's interesting. No doubt about it. Um, so, so, so this, this fleet of ships serviced all these little coastal towns. Um, Mm -hmm some of which developed more than others. And um, Olala had a little bit of something going for it. I mean, everything is picturesque. Um, Mm -hmm. Just down the road from Olala is a little town called Gig Harbor that is just an adorably gorgeous little town and home to one of my favorite distilleries. Um, Oh, nice. Excellent. And, and that place is doing well. Olala? Nope. And lots of places vanished. And and mm. and a lot of places that didn't vanish came very close. Wow. So Man. Uh, so today this area is residential and um, agricultural in the sense of you don't no, there's no farming but there's people raising you know goats and horses and chickens that type of stuff mm-hmm. almost everybody yeah has not really acreage. the <laughs> oh yeah i mean not really the uh terrain for you know no, crop no. farming but no oh my yeah God. i could definitely see that um it's beautiful is that like high real estate costs around there with those views, I imagine you could charge a bit more. Well, I mean, yeah, everybody's got a view darn near. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. Wow, I mean, that's just beautiful. But um, yeah, this is a very local story for you that we're going to be getting into. And, and I thought before we got much further there. Oh. I- um, Here, here's I a, wanted to. I'm gonna uh, uh-huh. pop up a map to give people oh, okay. a, a little idea of where it's at. And I and I lot I put a couple of names on there to give an idea of what's nearby. <laughs> Historically speaking. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> and the little nice. red dot is Olala. Wow looking at it and but uh, what I was gonna say before we get too far into this I wanted to put a bit of a disclaimer out um, I don't know if you feel the same way but 
it might sound like we're going to be picking a lot on alternative medicine <laughs> in this show. Um, I'm not somebody who thinks that you're an idiot just because you believe in it. So, you know, we get a lot of medical breakthroughs from what was considered alternative. But the bullshit artists in the field yeah. drive me crazy. Look, uh, here's, here's my position. If you have to believe in it, it's not science. Mm -hmm. If you can prove it, great. If it works, I'm all for it. I don't care where it comes from. I'm very pragmatic in that sense. But if I have to believe in it, that's bullshit. Yeah, I, I would agree with you more or less with one slight caveat. I mean, and that know, is the placebo effect. The placebo effect the pl is absolutely real. I, don't get me wrong. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. The placebo effect is absolutely real. In fact, one of the founders of the of neuro linguistic programming wanted to create a product line of sugar pills called placebos, and he wanted to label them for different ailments and mark oh, them wow. very clearly as placebos. He wanted to call them placebos, <laughs> and he was convinced that they would have every bit of as they would be every bit. Of as effective as prescription medicines, mm -hmm. without the side effects. Even you if know, you, the even if you told people up. they were placebos, science totally backs them up on that. Yeah, they have, but the yeah, problem said, with it is, oh hell no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they have their issues, but science has shown that even when somebody knows a uh, pill is a placebo, it still works for them. Yeah. But the problem is you have to – placebo is so much about the buildup. Right. It's like a magic act. You know, you have to create all the um, grandeur around it and the experience of it to get it to work. Um, but it is fascinating and utterly fascinating. But we're going to be looking at the abusive sides <laughs> Uh, yeah, alternative yeah. medicine today. The charlatans of, uh, and one of the worst charlatans. Of, yeah. Of uh, alternative medicine that you will ever come across, hopefully. Yeah, one would certainly hope with that. Um, and this is a woman by the name of Linda Hazard. I'm not going to call her doctor. Fuck that. Right? I saw her referred <laughs> yeah. to in some of these things as doctors. Like, yes, according to who? Well, you know, it's interesting. There was a quote that she had um, when she was speaking to the media on one of her manslaughter charges. It was, quote, I have told you time and again, it is Dr. Hazard. Mrs. Hazard was my mother-in-law. <laughs> okay, lady. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Linda Hazard studied in uh, Minnesota under another alternative medicine crank. I was just looking for his name. It's here somewhere in my notes. Edward Hooker Dewey. This guy did actually have an MD, but he was still an alternative medicine crank. Although, you know, one of the uh, more interesting <laughs> ones from around her time, too, people might not know this story, and I'll keep it real short. The guy who started Corn Flakes, John Kellogg. Harvey Kellogg. You know why he did it? Yeah, he was, he was, um, he was, he, was he, a, was he a Quaker? I think. It, no, Seventh-day Adventist, Seventh-day Adventist, I it, think it was. That's it. Yeah. He, he uh, actually did it because he thought a cornflakes diet would stop people from masturbating. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, yeah, that was part of his, uh, therapeutic treatment <laughs> absence yeah. from all kinds uh, of things well yeah, also because he thought it would help them poop better oh that's true 
Yeah, that pooping is just... You know, uh, Gandhi actually had a fixation on that, too. I think it had something to do with uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, something like that. But he was obsessed with the giving and receiving enemas every day. Ugh. How is that not, <laughs> like, forced, you know, dysentery? <laughs> yeah, this is true, especially in India, but... Yeah, you know, uh, why do you need help with that in India? <laughs> it's a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a exactly. fairly common thing. <laughs> oh, man. But, yeah, so she studies under this guy who does have an MD, but he is a champion of, dun, 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 fasting. Fasting. For your health. Now, let me just jump in here and say that many religions... Uh, preach the spiritual benefits of fasting. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Catholicism is a big one with that. Christianity, um, f- absolutely. I mean, yeah, uh, Jesus went out into the desert and fasted for 40 days, which I doubt. Yeah, yeah. I, there may be some medical benefits to it as well but not extreme fasting right just yeah you know, maybe. a day here and a day there type of thing yeah yeah and maybe that's what mr dewey taught he had a book as well um about it i'm just looking for that title ah uh, never mind i'll see if i can find that later but just it, looking linda at the Hazard. just looking at the pictures for linda she seems like a sweet and kind person from her face. <laughs> <laughs> from her face. Well, one would think. I always thought that she was kind of a true believer in her bullshit. But the problem is, there were many of her patients where she either just straight up stole their money or defrauded them out of money. As they died in her sanitarium in Alala. Um, she, she wrote, and a, and oh, she the wrote a book. And she wrote a book about it. She did. Uh, the Science of Fasting. She actually had another one in 1927, which I think we have a picture of. Coming right up. And if anybody who sees this has. Um, any of these books in a first or an early edition, go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash real monsters podcast and message it me. I would be interested in buying it from my collection. Um, it's actually one crime book that I've been looking at or been looking for, for a very long time with no success. But, um, yeah, she actually went to Washington for another interesting reason, and not just the uh, beauty of that area. She went there because Washington had a loose law where she could get in and technically be considered an MD. Really? Even, yeah, even though her uh, actual medical education... Essentially, was just a little bit of knowledge as an osteopathic nurse. Wow. So, yeah. Um, so, one of the things that is, um, you know, it's a little bit difficult to really grasp is how young this region is. Um, mm-hmm. It was made a state in 1889. Wow. I think that might have even been... 42nd state. Uh, so, so, you know, people in England have furniture older than our state. <laughs> I was just looking to see when her uh, asylum was erected. 
It might have even been before. N no, this no, I'm, I don't think so. And she was born in 1867. I my impression was it was early 20th century. It early 20th century, I think, was the heyday. And maybe it was. Um, I'll have to look. And perhaps it uh, was early 20th century with that. Oh, yeah, 1908. I'm sorry. Yeah. But she uh, goes there. Uh-huh. No, I'm, I, I just wanted to, you know, it, it's, it's, it's sometimes easy to forget that this is a very young area. And so the fact that she could, you know, that the laws and regulations were pretty undeveloped when she came here is not too surprising yeah i mean that was still basically the wild west absolutely back then um so i mean hell it it was what maybe i think 11 years before wyatt earp died to put it in a little bit of perspective yeah he died in 1919 um but yeah, she goes there and she creates Wilderness Heights in Olala. And her patients, they would literally fast for days, weeks, or months. And their typical diets during the day would be just a small amount of tomatoes and asparagus juice. Occasionally a small teaspoon of orange juice. And her official death toll is 15 but there's likely much more than that um 15 so this is very likely the first ser serial killer in the area huh yeah i didn't think about that very very likely it's Fif interesting. so at least 15 yes yes probably more but um, definitely 15. And she, uh, throughout all that, claimed they all died of an undi undiagnosed illness that she didn't know about. Well, surprise, surprise, such as cancer or cirrhosis of the liver. Um, and basically, they all died of starvation once you get down to it. Yeah. But uh, well, and how long did these deaths typically take? I mean, that, that's a hard question to answer because there were a few who were in there that uh, would have likely starved to death without her help. And I was just looking for the name of that woman. Um, Daisy Maud Hagland in 1908. Oh. I got a story about her. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you finish. Her official. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much here, but the uh, official cause of death with her was stomach cancer. But real doctors looking at her said her inability to eat yeah. would have caused her to starve to death even without Hazard's assistance. Interesting. Uh-huh. So, uh, what was her name? Hagland. What was her first name? Daisy. Daisy Hagland had a son. And this <laughs> son grew up to be this guy. Ivor. Good old Ivor. Ivor Hagland be is probably or was i should say was probably the most iconic restaurateur in the region um he had seafood restaurants uh ivers acres of clams uh ivers seafood house ivers this and that and there and then a chain of fish and chips shops um 
uh, you know, his his uh, slogan was keep clam, as you can see on there. If you can imagine putting that kind of a pun on a business, yeah, that's that's the kind of character it was. And he would write <laughs> and he would write these folksy little songs and make TV ads and he'd sing uh, his own songs. And he sponsored uh, Fourth of July fireworks every year out in Elliott Bay. And he did a lot of really good stuff in the area. And everybody knew who Ivor was growing up. Everybody knew. That's great. And he was. He sounds like quite the character. Very much a character. (laughs) Um, But, and he was the son of one of the victims of our. uh, Her second victim. Yeah. Sad. Man. But um, another thing that might answer the question that you had a little bit earlier, or give a little bit of uh, light to it, you had the Diary of Earl Edward Erdman, um, March 28, 1910. He was a civil engineer for Seattle. Okay. And he he actually didn't die in her sanitarium. He died in the uh, general hospital. But he uh, kept a diary detailing her treatments during the preceding weeks that provide the insight. So, uh, February 1st, saw Dr. Hazard and began treatment this day. No breakfast, mashed soup dinner, mashed soup supper. February 5th through 7th, one orange breakfast, mashed soup dinner, mashed soup supper. February 8, one orange breakfast, and the same as. What is a mashed through seventh? What is the mashed soup? Mashed potato soup? I wonder what that is. I'm trying to figure that out too. Some sort of early 1900s slang, I guess. Uh, Hmm. February 9th through 11th. One orange breakfast, strained soup dinner, strained soup supper. The 12th, uh, one orange breakfast, one orange dinner, one orange supper. The 13th, two orange breakfast, no dinner, no supper. 14th, one cup of strained tomato broth at 6 p.m. 15th, one cup hot strained tomato soup night and morning. The 16th, one cup hot strained tomato soup a.m. and p.m. Slept better last night, head quite dizzy, eyes yellow streaked and red. February 17th, ate three oranges today. The 19th, called on Dr. Dawson today at his home, slept well Saturday night. The 20th, ate strained juice of two small oranges at 10 a.m., dizzy all day. Eight strain juice of two small oranges at 5 p.m. 21st, eight one cup settled and strained tomato broth. Backache today just below ribs. The 22nd, eight juice of two small oranges at 10 a.m. Backache today in right side just below ribs. 23rd, slept but little last night, ate two small oranges at 9 a.m. Went after milk and felt very bad. Ate two small oranges at 6 p.m. The 24th, slept better Wednesday night, kind of frontal headache in a.m. Ate two small oranges at 10 a.m. Ate one and a half cups hot tomato soup at 6 p.m. Heart hit up to 95 minute and sweat considerable. The 25th, slept pretty well Thursday night. Ate one and a half cups tomato broth 11 a.m. Eat one and a half cups tomato broth 6 p.m. Pain in right below ribs. In the last entry, the 26th, did not sleep so very well Friday night. Pain in right side just below ribs and back. Pain quit in night. Eat one and a half cups tomato broth at 10.45 a.m. Eat two and a half pumps small oranges at 4.30 p.m. Felt better afternoon than for the last week. And then he ends up getting hospitalized and dying the afternoon of March 28th. Hey, February, this is like the anniversary month of all of this stuff. 
It is. So, I, I, I wanted to make one more point about the, our, our, you know, the what's called now allopathic medicine did not get off to a great start on its own either as far as science goes. There was a lot of um, superstitions ar around mm -hmm. medicine for, you know, eons from the beginnings oh. until very recently. Oh, yeah. So, um, and probably there are still some lingering things. Um, but... Mm -hmm. Less and less so, you know, with uh, this taking the scientific approach and natural natural medicine, alternative medicines. Um, yeah, just because something's natural does not make it good for you. No, I mean hemlock is natural. <laughs> Absolutely, <Poor> Socrates. <laughs> but um. <laughs> Yeah, and you know that's the uh, other thing. Urine is natural. There are plenty. <laughs> yeah, urine is. And that's the other thing too. You have uh, certain medicines that do have scientific backing that are in the alternative area too. Like uh, kratom is one that comes to mind. And that's just because they uh, haven't really um, done anything at the governmental level with allowing it to be prescribed by medical doctors but it is pretty easy to get and it's very effective for pain too i use it once in a while for my headaches yeah there's you know um digitalis comes from the foxglove plant you know a lot of a lot of drugs have their origins in in biology in plants and they simply find mm -hmm. the active ingredient and isolate it and synthesize it Oh, yeah. I mean, hell, opium, all opiates do. Yeah. Uh, aspirin would be another one. Yep. Um, but yeah, well, it's penicillin, just, it's penicillin came from, you know, leaving bread out. <laughs> yeah, this is true. This is very true. It just sucks when you get these quacks who abuse this system. But, uh, yeah, I never knew until doing the research for this that she was totally screwing her patients, too, in terms of, you know, just sapping up all their money. Well, that's kind of the point, is it not? I thought that she was more the true believer type. Ah. Who was, you know, doing it because she thought it was actually helping people. And maybe she was. Um, I guess those two well, things aren't mutually exclusive, necessarily. I mean, it, it speaks to a, you know, a very kind of conflicted thought process when if you're trying to bilk your clients, uh, killing them is usually a bad move because you stop getting money from them. <laughs> yeah. And so, you... You know, there's got to be some some serious conflicts going on in there. Like, ooh, I want them to die, but if they die, then I don't get any more money. So what do I do? <laughs> yeah, this is true. And this if enough true. of them die, then I won't get any more clients. But but one of those motivations was winning out over the others. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and if you. Um... If she was deluded enough in believing in this cure, um, it could get to the point where she becomes basically psychotic, you know, and her thought processes right. get so muddled that she doesn't see what's happening to her patients. Um, oh, here's the uh, titles of her other books. We showed Fasting for the Cure of Disease. Then there is Diet in Disease and Systemic Cleansing, 1917. Ouch, that just sounds pen painful. <laughs> but, yeah. My, I, when I was telling my daughter about this uh, lady, she goes, eh, she's just ahead of her time. If she was today in Los Angeles, she'd be filthy rich. 
Oh, Starving probably. people to de death for money. Working in a Scientology clinic, most <laughs> likely. <laughs> but um, now in 1912, she was convicted of the manslaughter of Claire Williamson, a wealthy British woman. And she, this lady, she weighed less than 50 pounds oh, at the time of her death. My gosh. How, yeah. Jesus, how is that even possible? That's, yeah. that's not much more than bones. No, it really isn't. But um, and she was one that was built rather heavily by Linda and her husband, Sam. Um, and she had a sister, too. I don't think that she was one of the victims, but let me take a look again here. Claire. Oh, yeah, it was just Claire. But she did have a sister. I think they were a uh, wealthy shipping family. I'm trying to remember what they did now. But now her sister, Dorothea, she also took the treatment. And it's alleged with that that she only lasted because a family friend showed up in time to get her out of the compound. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. I wonder why they didn't get Claire. Maybe she was too stubborn to leave. Well, you know, it it could be. It could become a mental health issue like anorexia, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what you're cultivating in these people. Yeah. You know, an eating disorder. An eating disorder, but based on supposed health benefits rather than appearances yep you know um <laughs> this reminds me of my ex a little bit we'll get just into that just a what, little did she starve bit you to death? <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> well she could have she was gluten intolerant and i didn't much care for a lot of what she ate but um, she worked for a chiropractor, right? Okay. And, it, you know, chiropractor, chiropractic medicine can help legitimate back and neck issues. Yes. There's no doubt about that. Yes. It, and the other stuff, you know, that surrounds that. But when you get into chiropractors who do things like adjust the neck of an infant, I have a big problem. Well, let me just I let me just tell you that one day our oldest daughter fell out of her high chair uh, and she would just she was crying and crying and crying and wouldn't stop crying and we took her to the chiropractor and she, they did just the lightest delicate little adjustment and she fell asleep almost instantly. Well, in this one, it wasn't so much for an acute type of injury like uh -huh. you described. This was for, I guess an you could call thing, it uh, uh... prophylactic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sort of prophylactic. And this was one of those chiropractors that I saw who was yeah, who I, I, preaches that yeah, we can cure a cold with a neck adjustment. No, and I I the, the I have a problem with the ones that. The answer for everything is come back three times a week for six weeks. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I'm not going to do that. That's ridiculous. You're just <laughs> you're just padding your accounts with my insurance oh, yeah. money. But but um yeah but the... yeah but so, <laughs> but you know I I've been to chiropractors I've been to massage therapists and you know as needed. Yeah, I've been to them too. For cervical and back adjustment. But you got to find fact, a good after, one. So. Yeah. Like oh, anything. absolutely. Like anything. There was a uh, separate one from the one that my ex worked for. He uh, took walk-ins. And I went into him one day because I was having just horrible um, pelvic pain. And the reason for that was I picked up a half barrel at the office in a weird way. Oh, man. <laughs> Yeah. Those aren't light. He, 
<laughs> yeah, and he um, gave me a free x-ray and then did the adjustment. Yeah. He was cool. Yeah. And I uh, go back to him when I need a cervical adjustment. But, um, yeah, the chiropractors who do that other stuff. And then this chiropractor that my ex worked for, she had me do a ionic foot bath <laughs> when I was in there. And... You know, you take your socks off, you put it in hot, um, magnetized water, and it supposedly sucks toxins out of your feet. Which toxins? Well, that's yeah, a, that's, a, <laughs> here, that's here, a good question. Here's something about the whole concept of toxins is that I heard a doctor say, that, look, if you, if you have toxins in your body, your liver and kidneys aren't doing their job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, and what got me and, and with no, this? Nobody with ever names bath. which toxins are supposedly being <laughs> extracted by their various methods. Yeah, name them and show me a picture. Well, but, and how do you measure that? Yeah, I mean, you get it under a microscope if you know that it's there. Yeah, um, you, show, me the, show me the me tests with this? For, for the toxins. You know how? Evidence. How do I know it's working? Yeah. Well, and get this, what they pointed to as evidence with this foot bath were the floaties from my black dress socks. <laughs> I'm not the, even kidding. The lint, the toe jam lint? <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, they did that, and I'm just thinking to myself, okay, how do I get out of here without calling these people morons? Wow, wow. And how do you magnetize water exactly? I don't know. That's what they called it, though, the ionic foot bath. See, magnetism interacts with ferrous metals only, like iron and iron. (laughs) Yeah. And that would have to... So in order for the water to be magnetized, there would have to be some form of water soluble iron but mm-hmm. then the iron would be drawn to the magnets and the, then they're not in the water anymore so yeah i, yeah. I, mean, I, I mean, have good no Christ, idea i learned this shit in grade school <laughs> yeah i would think most people did but you know the thing when you're thinking with your dick unfortunately um but yeah yeah the relationship didn't last too long after that because stupid people drive me crazy and yet you're still on the show (laughs) (laughs) Uh, yeah sorry kelly it was kind of off topic and that does disturb me greatly that people are still using her book as a guide to weight loss Wow. That's a little much. Yeah, that just. Yeah. Uh, sometimes people look for supposedly ancient. <laughs> yeah. Ancient answers that aren't really. Just because they're old doesn't mean they're wise. Very true. Very, very true. Man. Yeah, medicine has come a long way since Galen, my friends. Trust your doctor. It's the one thing I would want everybody to take out of this show, if anything. Trust your family doctor. Trust your primary doctor. Ask questions, right? Yeah, and advocate for yourself. Definitely. And there's no doubt about that. You should advocate for yourself with anything, but um, yeah, and trust your doctor. I'm just getting here further down. Well, um, let me let me put that slightly different. Find a doctor you can trust. Yeah. Just because they're yeah, a doctor does not mean enough. they're trustworthy. But find one no. you can trust. And then, you know, then you can trust them. 
No, I, yeah, and at the same time, I don't think there's... Don't think that your family doctor or primary doctor is going to lie to you because of some bullshit yeah. you hear on yeah, the internet. No, no, no. So what you happened to Miss Linda? <laughs> yeah, I'm just getting <laughs> to that. Uh, let's see. Dr. Linda she was convicted. <laughs> Doctor, quotation mark. She was convicted of that manslaughter death. Okay. Claire Williamson, 1912. Um, at the trial, it was proven that Linda had forged Williamson's will and stolen most of her valuables. The, you know Dorothea, who else? You know who else forged wills? Holmes. Who is that? Holmes. H. Really? H. Holmes. Yeah. Oh wow! He did some of that. Oh yeah, that's true. I remember yeah. that now. Um, yeah, it just took me a second because for some reason my mind drifted to Sherlock. Kind of a contemporary of, of, of Holmes too. Yeah. He was. Um. Now let's see. Only survived. She was sentenced to two to twenty years, which she served in the uh, Washington State Pen, Walla Walla. Oh yeah, that is where uh, still there. Ridgeway is now. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, she was released though on parole on the day after Christmas, nineteen fifteen. And it, get this: the following year, Governor Ernest Lister. Gave her a full pardon. What? I haven't the faintest clue why. Um, she and her husband, Sam, moved to New Zealand, where she practiced as a dietitian and osteopath until 1920. In 1917, there was a uh, Zealand newspaper from Wang- Wanganui, reported that she held a practicing certificate from the medical board in the state of Washington. Because she used the title doctor, she was charged in Auckland under the Medical Practitioners Act for practicing medicine while not registered to do so. She was found guilty and fined. Um, let's see, that would be about 600 New Zealand dollars. What is that in real money? (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. Oh, U.S. dollars, $462.13. Pittance, really. Yeah. Although, uh, maybe maybe she didn't have it by by that time, but it's still not a huge sum. Yeah. Yeah, it really isn't. In um, 1920, she returned to Olala opened a new sanitarium known publicly as a school of health, quotation marks, Mm. since her medical license had been revoked. And she continued to supervise fasts until it burned to the ground in 1935. It was never rebuilt. And? Yeah? (laughs) Want to guess how she died? Did she starve to death? Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> 19... No. <laughs> in 1938, while attempting a fasting cure, she 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 did it to herself. Yep. That's perfect. I think it might go back to believed her own bullshit. That's that's so symmetrical. It's too perfect to be true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow. I mean, it really is. How old was she? But. Let's see, 1867, 71, if my math is correct. Yeah. Okay. Born in 1867 in Carver County, Minnesota. So. I mean, you know, it's so, it's very often happens that con artists believe their own bullshit. After a time. It very, very often happens. I think you uh, saw it with a lot of the cult leaders that we've looked at, too. Yeah. 
Well, they have to, um, when, it, when, it, yeah, there's definitely a parallel with, with, um, with cults in her, uh, mental state. And you, mm -hmm. you, you, the fact that she died of her own, um, using her own methods uh, is completely um, consistent with that. Um, you know, I've mentioned before, there's a, there's a paper called When Prophecy Never Fails. And, mm -hmm. it, and it looks at what happens in cults when they make a prophecy and they put a date on it and then it doesn't happen. And you mm -hmm. would expect that the cult would disintegrate at that point, and it doesn't. People double down. They on double their down belief. on it. They doubled. You know, you they shed a few believers who who like, oh, this is bullshit, and they leave. But then they they come back with you know after a a, a, a brief period of introspection, and they go, oh well, we just weren't worthy enough or whatever, we, mm -hmm. we didn't do it right, or something like that, and we have to do more, and they they just, yeah, they double down and double down and double down, until, um, uh, you know, till they murder each other, or, you know, something goes wrong, or you die of your own stupid diet. <laughs> yep. I don't know why anybody would believe that to begin with, but like Kelly said in the comments, it's their snake oil. Pretty, pretty damn cheap snake oil too. When you're just selling the concept of starving yourself. Yeah. And save money. <laughs> yeah. Except you have to keep buying new and clothes. Save money. <laughs> uh yeah, she is the first of the crazy medical professionals we're going to be looking at. Which I not necessarily the um, next week or the week after, but we're going to be throwing in the medical shows once in a while. Yeah, and we're going to have our very own Kelly Evans on for three fascinating weeks of art crime. We are. We definitely are. Can't wait. You know, that's one movie I was looking at watching, but I never have. Um, Orson Welles, F is for fake. Say that again? Orson, Orson Welles did a movie... Right, not long before he died, called F is for Fake, and it's about art crime. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure if it is a fictional piece or if it's a, a documentary. Just looking that up. It's one of the few of his that I have never watched. Yeah, yeah. There's so much interesting stuff around art crime, and that it's literally gonna take us three weeks to touch on the subject. Yep. Yep. F for fake. I'm sorry, no is in the title. F for fake. It's considered a filmic essay. Ah. Uh. One of his more notable works, obviously, since nobody's heard of it. <laughs> uh, Poor Orson. Cursed of, by genius. Yeah. Definitely one of my favorite directors. Not the top, but he's in there, in the top ten. I've known a few geniuses. Actual geniuses. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't want that. I mean, not like you have a choice anyway, but yeah, um, I, I I see them and I like wow, 
I'm I, I'm as close to that as I'd like to get. Thank you. I, this is a good distance away from <laughs> genius, and I don't want to go there. <laughs> I'm with you on that. It just it reminded me of the uh, first line of Ginsburg's Howell when he says, I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness. Yeah, the... the I don't know, <laughs> sorry to diverge onto this subject, but genius has a very high price. It does. It definitely does. I don't mean to be hyperbolic, but I do think that there is truth to that idea of genius and madness and the very thin line between them. Very true, very true. Um, yeah, let's just uh, be grateful to be on the right hand curve, uh, right hand side of the bell curve, and not too far down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Don't want to go much further. Yep. Okay, well, Dr. Linda. <laughs> Dr. Man. Uh, man. Yeah. She is one of the weirder ones. Very and, You true. know, when we get further along with these medical shows, we're going to be getting to a uh, killer who was from my hometown and who I've actually corresponded with in prison. Oh, who's that? Michael Swango. Ah. An angel of death, as they're called. Yeah, we've uh, we talked about Shipman. He was kind of like that. Yeah, he's another one we need to do with the medical shows. I thought we covered him already. I didn't think we did. Maybe I'm wrong, but... Maybe not. I don't know. I'll go back and check. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I have folders on everybody with all their pictures. Yay. All right. Thanks Alrighty. for hanging out with us this week. And uh, to quote Jesse Dedman, like and share. Like and share. Like and share. All right. Absolutely. See you next week. Good night, everybody. Good night, all. Wow, 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 wow.